Hello, family. It's a blessing to be back on the Shabbat day to give praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. Hallelujah. How are we doing with the camera? Is everything set up? Mm-hmm. Hope all of y'all had a blessed week and pray that the Most High has shown favor unto you all. Um, we're about to get started with this Shabbat lesson. Um, hallelujah. Um, let me just see this real quick. Okay, um, okay. All right, let me disconnect from this. Okay, here we go. Yes, it's a blessing to be here on the Shabbat day to give praises, honor, and glory to Yah and Yehoshua HaMashiach. Blessed be the Most High for giving us the breath of life, for giving us understanding, for giving us health, for giving us strength, for giving us courage to stand for his name in these last times. We have a great study that the Most High has prepared by the Rock Kodesh. Hallelujah. Today we're going to talk about the two witnesses versus the spirit of Jezebel. The two witnesses versus the spirit of Jezebel. We pray that this study uh, has um, tremendous insight and understanding as to the times that we're living in and the times that are at hand. And what happened in our ancient Israelite culture in history is actually repeating itself because as it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, um, there's nothing new under the sun. There is absolutely nothing new under the sun. So we're going to start with a prayer, and then we're going to have uh, Sister Levati this Shabbat introduce everyone and welcome everybody, and then get into the study. Amen. Yeah. You guys ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. Blessed be thy name, Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Yehoshua's name, we call out unto you to say, Todah Yah for all things. Todah Yehovah for the breath of life. Todah Yehovah for our strength. Todah Yehovah for our word. Todah Yehovah for our strength. Todah Yehovah for our, our food, our shelter, and our clothing. Todah Yehovah for our families. Todah Yehovah for fellowship. Todah Yehovah for your mercy. Todah Yehovah for your forgiveness. Todah Yehovah for your compassion. Todah Yehovah for your grace. Todah Yehovah for your prophecies. Todah Yehovah for your kingdom. Todah Yehovah for all things, let everything that have breath praise your whole. We give glory unto you, Most High, because you are worthy. And you have given us all good things, and you have come to redeem us from the hand of destruction, from the hand of Sheol, from the hand of hell. And you went down to hell, Yehoshua HaMashiach, that we might be delivered. And we shall remember this, Most High, each and every day of our lives. We will glorify you, Most High. Because only you can give salvation. Only you, not only did you create us, but you saved us from the hand of the greatest enemy. You did all of these things despite our great uh, iniquity and sins. Generational curses. You overlooked these things. And you washed us with the water of the word. You did all of this almost high because you are merciful and you are worthy. So who else shall we praise? Who else shall we glorify but only unto you? We pray most high, Yah, that you would open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears to receive this word in spirit and in truth. Let it be written in our heart. Let not the adversary steal from us any longer. But let us come to you with thanksgiving, with praises, with sacrifices, with offerings, with, 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 with honor and glory unto you. Hallelujah. With our whole hearts, most high, let us confess that there is no other Elohim besides thee, and there are no works like unto thine. We pr pray that you would bless this study and bless all of the sick and afflicted. And we, again, pray that you would comfort Brother Israel Lewis as he mourns the, uh, the loss of his wife. And comfort his son, Mosiah, and bless Mosiah uh, Nartagus and heal him. And, and bless uh, uh, Brother Phil and heal him and all of the afflicted and, and the sick father. Cover them with your grace and preserve them. And let mighty signs and wonders be done in our days and times to show your mighty hand, Most High. Deliver us as we cry out unto you and turn away from this system. Restore all good things unto us by your mighty hand. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. In your host, your Hamashiach's name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, we want to thank you guys for joining us on another Shabbat day. It's a blessing to have the breath of life on the Shabbat. It's a blessing to um, be able to make it to another Shabbat. It's a blessing to have the chance to try to um, get it right again another week. So we thank you guys for spending your Shabbat day with us. Um, we just want to remind you guys to make sure that you thumbs up the video, make sure you like the video and share the video. Um, yes. It's going to be a good lecture from Brother Jediah. Um, we hope it edifies you guys and that it helps you um, in your walk. Um, do take the time now to go ahead and you can support the ministry. Um, you can do that one of three ways. You can do it through Cash App at dollar sign Kayashua. You can also do it via Zale at Kayashua at gmail.com. Or you can go over to the website, Kayashua forward slash tithes and offering. Click on that yellow donate button there and you can do your, do your alms, your, don your donations, your offering, whatever the Ruach leads you to do okay. to support the ministry. And we thank you guys that um, support continually, week after week, month after month, year after year. Um, we would not be able to do um, what we do if it was not for you guys um, doing what you're doing. So may um, Yehoah and Yehoshua bless you all and grant back unto you sevenfold, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, one hundredfold. Um, and we just we want to thank you guys. Um, I do want to take time out to remind you um, that at sundown, after sundown, after the Shabbat, um, you can go to our bookstore. And in our bookstore, you can um, get books for your library. Oh. All right, so we have, of course, the His Word Gold Edition. Um, that is the only mm -hmm. of its kind. And number one in Israel. Great job. Um, Praise um, Yehoshua HaMashiach for his Ruach. Um, yeah, it, as most of you guys know, we read from this weekly, um, every Shabbat. So it's a very good um, a very good addition to your library um, so that you can keep up. It makes it easier and it gives you a better understanding Hebraically um, of us as a people. Uh, the names are translated back to their original um, Hebrew names. There's color-coded text. Yes. From the Old Testament, if you're in the New Testament, and I believe it's in blue. Yes. Um, then you have Yehoshua's, Yehoshua's words. Those are in red. We have precepts throughout the Bible. Um, the regular KJV has 66. Yes, 66 books. We have 96? 96 books. 96. Extra 30. An extra 30. So um, very, very, very um uh, a big deal. You need to get it. You need to add it to your library. You're going to get so much more of an understanding of the word of the Most High Yah um, with the extra missing books that you have here. Dang. Also, we have, for those that are learning the language, we've got two books for you. We have the Testament of Yahshua. Um, this is the um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So the Gospels and Revelation, that it's in Hebrew and in English. Hallelujah. So you have your Hebrew on the right side of the page, and you have your English on the left. Forgive me. Your English is on the left there, or on the right, actually, I'm sorry. My right, or your right. We also have the uh, book, The Secrets of Enoch. Yes. This is the one and only of its kind. Um, you can't find another book in Secrets of Enoch. Um, so it has books one and two. Yes. Um, it's in Hebrew and in English. Um, it's a wonderful book. It's so profound. So much knowledge. Um, this book, you know, when I first read this book, for me, um, it gives you so much more understanding of things that are spoke about briefly, you know, in the 66. That's right. So it really, really goes into deep detail. It goes into a lot of the mysteries that, you know, um, that we never knew uh, because we just get glimpses of what Enoch speaks about in the 66. So this book is definitely um, 
A must have. It's also filled with precepts all throughout the entire book. Oh, Old God. Testament, New Testament, apocryphal, missing, missing books. books. Full of yes. precepts. Yes. yes. From the front to the back. Yes. So you definitely know, um, scripture says that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every matter be established. So things that Enoch said, they then we're in agreement by basically saying the same thing that Enoch right. said in the 66. So we hope to be getting into that book today as well, the Shabbat. Yes, praise you, Hashem Hashiach. All right, so for you name seekers, we have our um, concordance, and this is the only one of its kind. Yes. <laughs> that seems like that's like a regular thing around here. Praise be the Most High for the inspiration. The inspiration is Hallelujah. His. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we have the concordance for you guys that are looking for a name. So there's um, a lot of different Hebrew names, what they mean in Hebrew. Um, uh, on this page here, you see the, the de genealogies from different Hebrew name prophecies. So when you take the Hebrew names, um, like I believe the 12 tribes of Israel. Yes, the 12 tribes. When you put those together. Sister Christina, do you have the go over some stuff in that book today as well. Uh, Let me know if you can. If you can't send it to Concordance? Me. Yes. I think I'm Okay. All right. And then my absolute favorite, the lost acts of the holy apostles. Mm. This book right here. Mm. You know, um, it really makes you search yourself. It makes you search your heart. Well, it should. It did me. It makes you to um, look at your walk. It makes you to look at your faith. You know, it, it, it'll have you to start really looking at things differently mm -hmm. um, from a different perspective. When you take your name, whatever your name is at home watching this, if you're ready for whatever your name is, 2.0. Mm. <laughs> yes. That's the book that upgrades your faith right there, for real. Yeah, it, it, it most definitely will. You know, um, I know one big thing for me is, you know, once I started um, finding out the things that the apostles had to experience while they were in their flesh, just like mine, just like yours, you know, while they were in their flesh, the, the, the trials and the things that they had to go through, you know, once I started reading those things, it really made me question, um, you know, People, when we put uh, names on ourselves and, you know, we call ourselves apostles, you know. That's are, are not we, a title to take lightly. I mean, you know, names are important and they have meaning. So if you read this and, you know, you're you're considering yourself or labeling yourself as an apostle, you know, um, that's kind of scary for me. Um, they went through some, some real. Oh, yeah. Trying things, so um, but this book is phenomenal. Uh, it's a phenomenal book, and it details and outlines the lives and the martyrdoms of the apostles yes. during the time of Yehoshua's walk on earth and after um, yes. he ascended into heaven. And then our newest book um, by our uh, our son Jediah Malek the second, the Yosef, the lost prince of Israel. So this is the newest book to our library, and it's a wonderful read, a great story, beautiful artwork, um, our very own artist in the house. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, this here is a page to show you, you know, where pictures are. Um, there's, it's a picture gallery there in the back. But it's a very lovely book. It's good for the children, um, and it's also good for adults as well. Um, there is just a very good outline of the story of the life of, um, of Yosef. Right. So we're just grateful that, um, that our very own was able to be used to provide something for the other youth in the nation. Praise and then our most recent is... The Enoch calendar for 2021 and 2022. This is the original Enoch calendar. Um, 
Praise Jehoshua Hamashiach. Uh, the yeah. revelation was give, given unto this ministry back in 2012-2013 um, in regards to the Enoch calendar. All other Enoch calendars derive from this calendar. Um, hence the reason why a lot of the information that you find inside here, you will only find here. Um, martyrdoms of the apostles, like what's spoke of in the lost acts of the um, holy apostles. The Maserol, you have your months in Hebrew and in English. Each month you've got scriptures throughout so that you're edified. Um, you have your renewed months. You have your mix of the week that's in blue throughout. You have your equinox, your solstices. Um, very, very uh, edifying. And you have it for the entire year. So you can make plans for your feasts that are upcoming, the fall festivals. Yes. Well, we actually have a shovel load coming soon, but, you know, after that, you have your fall festival, so you're able to plan in advance for these things, um, because we've already got it um, together for you here, so Amen. praise Yah. Hallelujah. Um, and we just want to thank you guys. I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Jediah okay. now. Um, I do want to add one last thing. Family, do remember to save all of your questions. For the end of the lecture, because at the end of the lecture, um, Jediah will pray, will pray, seal everything in our hearts and our minds, and then after that, we will have Q&A, so Amen. we will do that at the end. Um, so, may Yehoshua and Yehovah bless you, get your notepads and your pencils out, and get ready to take notes, and I'll turn it back over to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have to greet the people. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to greet the people. Oh, yeah. goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> Help me, Father. <laughs> forgive me, I am so sorry. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Let me get to this. <laughs> Ooh, hello. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Help me, Father. All right, so let me say Shabbat right. shalom to you all. Sure you get the, mic the microphone. Okay, let me say Shabbat shalom to everyone. Do forgive me. I got a little ahead of myself. I'm excited for the... Um, lesson today. Um, so let me say Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Ima Eliana. Shabbat Shalom to DJ Brightside 206. Shabbat Shalom to Marsha P. Shabbat Shalom to Michelle Whitney. Shabbat Shalom to Maisha White. Shabbat Shalom to Amar Yehuda. Shabbat Shalom to Marsha Thomas. Shabbat Shalom to Lakia Hood. Um, Shabbat Shalom to the um, entire Hood family. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Nartagus and our beloved sister Pamela. Shabbat Shalom to you guys. Our Hallelujah. prayers and our love is with you guys. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Nat J. Shabbat Shalom to Goyan Radio and Camp Thought. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to Pedro Eliezer Guz um, Guzman. Forgive me. Shabbat Shalom to Marcus and Isabel Brooks. Shabbat Shalom to Jamila Rashida. Shabbat Shalom to Yehuda's daughter. Shabbat Shalom Elizabeth P. Shabbat Shalom Vanessa White. Shabbat Shalom Keisha L. Um, as a reminder for those of you guys that just checked in, um, do take this time out to um, pay your tithes, your offerings, your donations. You can do that one of three ways, through Cash App at dollar sign Kayashua. You can do that at Zell at Kayashua at gmail.com. Or you can go over to the website at Kayashua forward slash tithes and offering. Click on that yellow donate button and you can do your tithes, donation, and offerings there. And we are so grateful and we're so appreciative to those of you guys that support us week after week. Um, we, we pray that... Yehoah grants it back unto you. Shabbat Shalom to um, Yakalia. Shabbat Shalom to Chriselia. Shabbat Shalom to Israel's child. Shabbat Shalom to Malak Ani. Shabbat Shalom to Serena Golson. Shabbat Shalom to Natasha Irizari. Shabbat Shalom to Big Brother Irene. Shabbat Shalom, um, Sister Tracy. Shabbat Shalom to Israel Lewis. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to Ibri Ben Yaakov. Shabbat Shalom to... Uh, hmm. 
Ana Yasharala Ephraim. Shabbat Shalom to Yashan Benjamin. Shabbat Shalom to Ladek. Shabbat Shalom to Kenya. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Tanisha Gilbert. Shabbat Shalom to Lenora Collins. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Gladys Wilson. Shabbat Shalom, Babia. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Clarence and Sister Angela Burns. Shabbat Shalom to David Ben Israel. And Shabbat Shalom to Carl McCullough. And Shabbat Shalom to Ahava Walters. Shabbat Shalom, family. We love you. Again, forgive me. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> And I will turn it over to Jediah. And one other thing for all of those who emailed us concerning the, the, the virgins and the eunuchs, uh, we're going to give another week because we got a lot of responses, but we're still waiting for everyone to set up their Zoom accounts so that we could have our first discussion and meeting. Um, so please, um, we only had like uh, two people out of the people who mm -hmm. uh, contacted us actually set those accounts up. Mm -hmm. So we need y'all to set up the Zoom uh, accounts so that we can proceed uh, with uh, starting this group of fellowship. Hallelujah. For encouragement. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when you set up that Zoom account, um, the information that we need is we need for you to email us the email address that's associated with your Zoom account. That way we're then able to send you out an invite so that we can do Zoom calls with you guys to set up what the most high y'all willing is getting planned. Hallelujah. All right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Praise Yah. We're going to look at the calendar briefly. We are now on uh, the fourth Shabbat leading up to the feast of Shavuot or Pentecost. We are on the date, the Hebrew date of Iyar the 15th, which coincides with May 1st. Hallelujah. Thank the Most High Yah for another week that he's given us. Um, three weeks from now will be the seventh Shabbat from the resurrection of Yehoshua leading to the Feast of Shavuot. So the Feast of Shavuot is this month of the, uh, the Gregorian calendar, May, but it will be uh, the month of Sawan in Hebrew. Sawan the first will be here and then the 23rd of May will be, which is the 7th of Sawan will be Shavuot. So that's where we are. Um, and coming up later also is the martyrdom of Thomas, of Toma. That will be in between that and Shavuot as well. So that should be a memorial day where it would be good to remember Yehoshua on that day and have a little un, um, unleavened bread and wine in remembrance of him. He said, do this in remembrance of me. When we do that on these seven part days, it's um, really spiritually um, enlightening and edifying and it glorifies Jehoshua through his apostles. So those are good times to do that. Hallelujah. We want to get right into the study. The two witnesses versus the spirit of Jezebel. The two witnesses versus the spirit of Jezebel. We're going to start in the Testament of Yahshua, chapter 17. Um, so got Testament of Yahshua, Revelations chapter 17. Hallelujah. Revelation 17. The great prostitute and the beast. We're going to take a look at this um, end time system and the two witnesses who are soon to appear. And we're going to compare it back to the ancient times. And we're going to see all of the correlations between the days of old and right now today down to the two witnesses and the spirit of Isabel or Jezebel. Revelation 17, we're going to start at verse 1 in the Testament of Yahshua. Y'all ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Wayabo ekad min shiva and one of the seven came. Shiva is how we say uh, seven in Hebrew. Sheen. Bait, iron. Okay? Shiva equals seven. It's also the word used for oath or vow. When you vow in Hebrew, you make an oath, you make a seven. By your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. When we say an oath or a vow, we're making it 
Uh, a seven. This light went out here, told I. Okay. Um, I think there's a short or something. It's flashing. Turn it out. Can you take care of that? So you can see yeah, the yeah. Torah. So you, go you go ahead and sit down. She'll take care of that Torah. When you make a vow, you make a seven in Hebraic thought. This is why it's so important for us to come to the roots of our language and of our heritage. So it's, it's like confirming a word seven times over when you make a vow. All right? Wayabo ekad min hashiba. Hamalakim. So one of the seven angels, Hanosim, from the root Nasa. We talked about Nasa last Shabbat. Y'all remember what Nasa is? Nasa. Y'all don't remember? Okay. To bear, or to carry, or to marry. Okay. okay. Or a burden. Okay, y'all remember that? So the seven angels, one of these seven angels is carrying Shiva, again, seven, Hakwa'ar Rot, seven horns. Okay? Why thou bear? And he said, Allah, and he said unto me, Lemur, Bo, Wa'ar Aka, Et Mishpa. And I will show unto you, come forth and I will show unto you the judgment, Hazona, of the harlot, Hagadola, Hayoshevit. Yashav is a root here. I'm going to magnify that a little bit, make it big. Yashav, Yod, Sheen, Bait. Yashav. That means to sit. Or to dwell. Okay? So when we see Yoshet Ha Yoshebet, that means the woman who is sitting. Present tense. From the root Yasha, which is past tense. Yoshebet means the one sitting, the female one, the, the, the woman who is sitting. Okay? Al Mayim, upon the waters, Rabin, upon the many or the great waters. Go ahead. We are in the book of Revelations, Hikgalut in Hebrew, chapter 17 and verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Amen. Verse 2. Ashir Zanu Akreha Maoke, uh, the uh, which committed uh, who the, the kings Maoke's kings of uh, this was Malak, Mem, Lamed, Kaf means uh, if you say Malak, that means to rule. If you take that same word and change the vowels. It should be a cop, so fee, really, but I'm just putting it for time's sake. Malek means king. So it's the same word in Hebrew, but you change the vowel, it means from rule to king. Okay? Malke. So that Malke means kings of. Ha Adama. So the kings of the earth followed after her. Uh, Why Yish. Karu uh, Shokne Tebel Me Yayin Taz Nuta. Yayin is how we say wine. Yod, Yod, Noon, Sophit. Yayin equals wine. So the kings of the earth were in fornication and they drank her wine. Go ahead. The wine Taz uh, Toda. Taz Nuta, wine of fornication. All right. Chapter 17 of Revelations and verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Mm, 
Okay, verse 3. Why ya or why be any from the word bo, which means to come or to go. We have a prefix of wow and yo and he uh why they uh by any and he came or uh came unto this suffix of noon and yo means myself. He came unto me, Baruach, and the Ruach came unto me, or brought me, Hamidbara, into the wilderness, Wa'ere, and I saw Wahine Isha, and behold, a woman. Yoshevet, from again from the word Yasha, which means to sit. Or to dwell. Al Chaya upon the beast. Chaya. From the word Kai, as in Kai Yeshua. Beast, living one. Living one uh, slash beast is what that means, okay, in Hebrew. Aduma, the red beast, or the beast of the earth, Katula uh, Malayat Shemot Kedufin, uh, with with uh, the names of blasphemy, Gaduf, Gemel, Dalit, Fay. I think it's blasphemy. Wala Shiva Rashin, and she had, and to her were seven, again Shiva, from the word Rosh, which means head. Okay? She had seven heads, what Esir Quaranin, and ten horns. Go ahead. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the Ruach into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay. Uh, horns is uh, Quarin, which I think the name Karen comes from. Um, but it can also mean horn, but I believe it could also mean triangles. So... Uh, when I think of this, I think also of the demonic triangles, pyramids, with their eyes on them. Mm. Okay, this is, this is how I discern when I read. This is like Hebraic thought, okay? All right, verse four. Where Haisha and the woman Lavusha was dressed or wearing Argamon, purple, well, Shani, I just skipped over Lavush, which is a good word for people to know. Lavusha, from the word Lavash, okay? Which means to wear or to get dressed, okay? Let me get some, y'all need some strong words for these numbers? Or should we just keep going? Keep going? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lavusha, Argamon, purple, was Shane, where he, uh, Muklala, Bazahav. Uh, I'm not sure what Muklala is, but Zahav is gold. What Eben, Yequar, Yequara, and stones that are precious, precious stones. Ufninim, Uvyada, Kos, Zahav, and she had in her hand a cup of gold. Gold is Zahav. Zion, hey, Zion, hey, be, and Kos, K, uh, uh, Kaf, Wild Samek is cup. K 
cos equals cut. Okay. Mele, uh, melea to able, full of uncleanness, full of abominations. So she has a golden cup full of abominations. That's how we say abomination to eva. But this is plural to, uh, to a vote with uh, tumat and uncleannesses, or uh, yeah, tumat is to be unclean. Um, Taznuta of adultery or poetry. Go ahead. Verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. All right, verse 5. Wa al mitzkah, and mitzkah is forehead, that's right. Mitzkah. Mitzak, matzak. Um, forehead. And upon, and that extra hair at the end means her forehead. The hay with the dot inside of there, that means a forehead belonging to a woman. Well, Al Mitzka, Katub, and on her forehead is written Shem. What's Shem mean? Name. Name. Like the patriarch Shem. We are Shemetic. Shem, but uh Bedetic sold um Bavel. Uh the names of uh the path of sold, uh sold, I forget. Bavel is Babylon. Mystery came Toda. Hagedola, great Babylon, aim or mother of Hazonot, mother of harlots, with to uh, with to abos and abominations, Ha Adama of the earth. Go ahead. Verse five. And upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Well, actually, what we're reading, what is in Revelation, what John the Revelator is talking about, is actually Jezebel. This is a description of Jezebel to the T. So we're going to read a little bit further and get into our study. He's describing Jezebel, which the two witnesses have to go against and contend against. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, verse 6. Wa ere, and I saw Et Haisha Shakora Midam, and I seen the woman uh, Shakor, uh, I think probably like uh, rewarding of Shakor, no, that's Shakor, Shakora. I'm not sure what that, probably shedding Midam, we have blood, Ha Kwidoshin. So she kills the blood, she uh, spills the blood of the saints. Hakwidoshim from the word kwadosh, holy, the holy ones, which is translated as the saints. Umadam ede Yehoshua. Um, and from the blood of the witnesses or the saints of Yehoshua. Wa eshtomem, and she drinks them, al hamar e, hashama gedola. Go ahead, translate that. Verse 6, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, mm -hmm. and with the blood of the martyrs of Yehoshua. And when I saw her, I wondered with a great admiration. And when he sees this, he wonders with a great admiration. Right. Let's see what this is in days of old. Let's now turn to the book of First Kings. We're going to go to First Kings chapter 18.
Read that last verse. Do you have it up or you changed it already? Mm -hmm. A revelation? Uh, yeah, I still have it up. Yeah, read it, please. Um, verse 6 again. Mm -hmm. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yehoshua. And when I saw her, I wondered with a great admiration. She's drunken with the blood of the martyrs of Yehoshua, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to point out. Okay. This is Hebraic thought. She's drunken on Madame Ede Yehoshua. She's drunken with the blood. This is blood. Let me um, write on here for you. This word is blood. Dom. And with and with blood a day, which they translated as martyrs, which is correct. But martyr in Hebrew also means the same as witnesses. Let's look it up in Hebrew. Okay. You could read some comments in the meantime. I'll pull this up. Really not a lot. Just a lot of Shabbat Shalom's. Okay. Really haven't. Yeah, okay. no no comments. Actually, just Shabbat Shalom. Okay. Okay. Hebrew word H5707. Concretely, a witness. Mm. Okay? Abstractly, a testimony. Mm. So when you say the testimony of Yahshua and do Yahoshua, you're saying the witness of Yahoshua, specifically a recorder or a witness. Okay? Mm. All right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go. Okay. I don't think the word martyr is used in the Old Testament at all. But in modern translations, it, witness in martyr is the same word in Hebrew. Okay. So I wanted to point this out so everybody can understand that the martyrs of Yehoshua are actually the witnesses. And we're going to see what Jezebel did in days of old. Okay. Let's go now to, uh, we were in. First Kings eighteen. Okay. First Kings eighteen. Let's start at verse one. All right. We are in the book of First Kings, Malachim Rashon, chapter eighteen, starting at verse one. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after many days that the word of Yehoah came to Eliyahu in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Right. I will send rain upon the earth. If rain has not fallen, what does that mean is, is occurring? A drought. A drought or a famine. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Verse 2. And Eliyahu went to show himself unto Akab, and there was a sore famine in Shomron. There was a sore famine in Samaria, or Shomron. 
Now, let's keep this in mind. Let's go to the book of Revelations chapter 11. We'll start at verse 3. The book of Revelations, chapter 11, verse 3, Hikalut in Hebrew. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. This is three and a half years. Okay, three and a half years is this representative of. Okay, three and a half years, which is also symbolic of three and a half days. Okay, he will give power to his two witnesses, and they're going to prophesy in sackcloth. Go ahead. Verse four. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the earth. Mm hmm. And if any man will hurt them, mm -hmm. fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Verse 6. These have power to shut heaven. These have the power to shut heaven. That it rain not in the days of their that prophecy. That it doesn't rain in the days of their prophecy. So now, if we take that... Um, and go back to First Kings. It was not raining in those days. Mm -hmm. All right. First Kings. Eighteen. And let me start at four. Um. Uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, three. Go ahead. All right. Verse three. And Akab called Obadiah which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared Yehoah greatly. This is the same Obadiah from the book of Obadiah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, go ahead. For it was so when Isabel cut off the prophets of Yehoah. Isabel, or Jezebel, she cuts off the prophets of Yehoah. So as we were reading in Hebrew at the beginning, what does the whore of Babylon do? Drinks the blood of the saints. She drinks the blood of the saints. Mm -hmm. Revelation eight, uh, 17 shows us that the harlot drinks the blood of the holy ones or the saints. So here we see again that the same thing is happening in the times of old where Jezebel is cutting off the prophets. Go ahead. That Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. So this represents the time of tribulation. This is the time of tribulations of the end time. We're seeing that those who believed in the Messiah were hunted down by the beast and its system. So it was in the days of old, during the time of Elijah or Eliyahu, the prophet. The prophets were being hunted down. And Jezebel was responsible for killing 400 of them, or 450. Now, there was a man within the government named Obadiah, or Obadiah, who hid 100. And he divided them into two groups of 50, again, indicating or showing, in a sense, two witnesses, two camps. Mm. Okay, go ahead. Verse 5. And Akab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So when the blood of the saints is, is spilled, Yah dries out the water of that nation. This is what happened in Egypt, did it not? Mm -hmm. But instead, Yah turned the water into what? Blood. Blood. 
And this is what the two witnesses have power to do. They have the power to turn the waters into blood. Let's go to Revelations 11. Revelations 11 and 6. All right. We are in the book of Revelations, Hikalu in Hebrew, chapter 11, beginning at verse 6. Mm -hmm. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, right. and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Because... When they come after the saints of the most the heathen. So now as we look at the United States and we see that the U.S. is losing its international position as a dominant so-called superpower, that's because they continue to shed the blood of the saints of our people. So now in the news this week, you see that the police right after finally for the first time in I don't know how many years, that a police officer was actually convicted for the murder of one of our people, unarmed and defenseless, as soon as this verdict went forth, and the policeman was uh, proclaimed guilty, the police went and shot, I think, six more people that same day across the country. They murdered six more innocent people, unarmed, all our people. As soon as they get a, a guilty verdict, for the first time, who knows how long? I don't even remember the last time a white police officer was uh, uh, convicted for murdering um, uh, one of our people, male or female. They can kill a man or a woman, unarmed, and they can get away. They, they kicked the sister's door in. Was it in Louisville? Uh -huh. While she was in her bed, and they shot her. She was unclothed at the time. They shot her, and they are not even in jail to this day. So for the first time in I don't know how long, there's a conviction, and they go and murder more. So what happens when they do this? China creates their own uh, digital currency. The value of the dollar starts to plummet. Mm -hmm. The worldwide... Uh, uh, position of the United States is falling and they continue to kill our people and the more they shed the blood of the saints and this time America goes down and they don't see the correlation mm -hmm. it's it's a clock it's a, an uh, what do they call it an, um, with the sand uh, hourglass hour it's an hourglass that they can't stop the more of our people are falling down like sand, the more the time runs out for this nation. But they can't help themselves, can they? So the whore of Babylon could not help herself, and she becomes drunk off of the blood of the saints. She is now delirious where she can't even be reckoned with. She can't even be reasoned with. She takes no accountability for the shedding of blood of our people. Because actually this is how she gained her power to begin with. But now it's to the point of where she has become drunk and the nations are seeing her uncleanness. Hallelujah. All right, go ahead. Do we have any comments? Yep. Nope. Okay, go ahead. All right. Um, verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony... The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. So when they finish their testimony, the beast, the anti-Messiah, shall ascend from hell and fight against them and actually kill them. Who are the two witnesses? Cain, Enoch, and Eliyahu. And right now, we're reading the story of Eliyahu, or Elijah. What happened when he went to contend against Jezebel? Um, she tried to kill him. He fled. He fled. He never finished that testimony. And so the battle has waged on from that time till now. And we're going to come into the season where 
that confrontation will come to its final conclusion. And the two witnesses will go around the world and they will preach against the evil and the injustices against our people and the blasphemies against the Most High Yah and His Son, Yehoshua HaMashiach. But they won't have power to hurt these two witnesses during their ministry. Just like Satan doesn't have power to kill you as long as you are walking in your purpose. When Yah gives you an anointing or a calling, you are unkillable. While you are walking in your purpose that Yah has called you to, the adversary cannot kill you. He may be able to come against you to try to slow you down, to get into your mind, to, uh, to uh, discourage you, to try to afflict you, but he cannot kill you. This is the importance of walking in our calling. It is not until their mission was completed that the adversary actually was able to kill them. But it was for a purpose because when their blood is shed, that brings about judgment on the whole world. That's when the angels start pouring out all those vials all over the earth. And then Yehoshua comes right after that. So they're only allowed to actually die so that Yehoshua can come and finish this thing. Let's read that again. All right. The book of Revelations, mm -hmm. chapter 11, I believe, uh, verse 7. Yes. And when they shall <clears throat> have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Right. So this is why Eliyahu, Elijah, did not finish his 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 war against Jezebel at that time. So let's go back to that time and get some understanding from that. First Kings 18. Sleeka, did you send me the concordance? You can send it. Just like I said, just email it. Okay. Yes. I think that's really amazing that um, about Elijah, him, um, well, since he had to uh, confront Jezebel, mm -hmm. He didn't finish that, and Yah took him away, and like 3,000 years later, yes. it's still the same way, if not worse. Three and a half days later, 3,000, probably 500 years later. That's right, it's still the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a picture of the spiritual war that has waged on, okay? All right. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. And you want me to start again at verse 4? 5. Verse 5. And Akab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and into all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. Mm -hmm. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Akab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Mm -hmm. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Eliyahu met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou Adonai Eliyahu? Now, we read last week in First Clement, Eliyahu was what? A virgin. A virgin. So, more than likely, the two witnesses in this time will be virgins as well. Or at least one of them. Enoch was not, but Eliyahu was. But both of them may be, in this last time, a part of the 144,000. To contend against the beast and overcome Jezebel in the end. They overcome Jezebel to be confronted by the beast. Jezebel, or Babylon, kills many prophets, but I believe it's gonna be the prophesying of the two witnesses that brings this final destruction of Babylon. And then when Babylon falls, then the beast system rises up in its place. Okay. 
Go ahead. All right, verse 8. And he answered him, I am. Go, tell my Adon, behold, Eliyahu is here. And he said, What have I sinned, that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Akab to slay me? Mm -hmm. So uh, Obadiah hid prophets. But if Ahab finds out, Akab finds out that he saw Eliyahu and didn't arrest him, then his life is in jeopardy. This is what he thinks. So go ahead. Verse 10. And Yehoah thy Elohim, as, I'm sorry, Yehoah thy Elohim liveth. There is no nation or kingdom whether Adoni had not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they find thee not. Ahab, even though he was wicked, he was a very powerful king. Akab represents the anti-Messiah. He represents the beast. He is the one who killed the prophets. He commissioned it. Jezebel pulled the trigger. No, Jezebel points the gun, but Ahab pulls the trigger. She points out who she wants to die, and Ahab, Ahab has them slain. He is the anti-Messiah. He is a picture of it. And he speaks to his governor, who is Obadiah, and Obadiah goes in one direction, and Ahab goes in the other direction. This is showing you that the preaching of the two witnesses is going to divide this nation. Aha is going to go one direction to the left, and Obadiah, which means Abadiah, the servant of Yah, the servant of Yah will go in the other direction. This will split the kingdom when the two witnesses start preaching against this corrupt system. Famine and drought will start to occur, and people will make a choice, and Yah will start to separate the sheep from the goat. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, verse 11. And now thy sayest, go, tell thy Adon, behold, Eliyahu is here. And it came to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Ruach of Jehovah shall carry thee, whether I know not. And so when I come to tell Akab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me, but I, thy servant, fear Jehovah from you. Right. So he feared that this anti-messianic uh, king will kill him because he has the blood of many saints on his hands. But it's a testimony of the people, the believers who turn away from the system that Yah will actually keep them. And he won't turn them back over to the hand of the enemy once they separate from him. Go ahead. Verse 13. Was it not told, Adonai, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of Yehoah? Mm -hmm. How I hid a hundred men of Yehoah's prophets by fifty in the cave and fed them with bread and water. So now when... This corrupt system starts to persecute our people as we see in the land of Israel now. They've already started by expelling 46 families of Hebrews who live in the land of Israel. They're already beginning this system of Jezebel and the beast is starting to raise itself up because it can no longer hide itself. It can no longer keep secret it's uh, racism, it's bigotry, it's, it's hatred, it's injustice, it's inhumaneness. All of these things are starting to come out around the world. Everyone is seeing it broadcasted on the internet. They're seeing the corrupt trials where even the man who was murdered last week, he was shot in the back of the head, he was shot, I don't even know how many times. They wouldn't, they wouldn't release how many times he was shot, but he was shot by seven police officers. Mm -hmm. 
Seven. So how many times was he shot unarmed? He was shot in the back of the head, and the judge won't even allow the media to get a copy of the footage, nor the families to get a copy of it. Shot in the head. And the world is seeing this injustice. Yet America goes to every other nation and tells them about their human rights violations. You're seeing that when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris takes office, it's no different than Trump being in office. It's still great corruption, white supremacy. Everyone sees it. It doesn't matter who takes office. White supremacy is the law of the land. And white supremacy gets its power from drinking the blood of the saints of Yehoshua. Go ahead. We are in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18 and verse 14. And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Adon, behold, Eliyahu is here, and he shall slay me. And Eliyahu said, As Jehovah of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Abadia went to meet Akab and told him, and Akab went to meet Eliyahu. And it came to pass when Akab saw Eliyahu, that Akab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? So we have the true man of the Most High being accused as being a troublemaker. What does Akab mean? Ahab. Akab. My father's brother, Ak, Ab, or in other words, my father's friend. What do Yehoshua say about the false prophets? In the Sermon on the Mount. He said, when you're persecuted for righteousness sake, rejoice, for your reward is great in the kingdom of heaven. And then what does he say? Let's go to it. Let's go to it. Matthew 5. Matt, in fact, let's go to Luke 6. It might be in Luke 6, that portion. Luke chapter 6. Let's start at Matthew 6 and 20. Matthew and Luke. I mean, Luke 6 and 20. So you got All right. We are in the book of St. Luke. Lucas in Hebrew chapter 6 in verse 20. Mm -hmm. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and, and said, said, Blessed be ye poor. Now, blessed be ye poor. When it says in Revelation 11, what were the true the two witnesses dressed in? Uh, sackcloth and ashes. Mm -hmm. What does that indicate? Um, Poverty. Mm -hmm. Here you go. For yours is the kingdom of Elohim. Yours is the kingdom sake, right? The witnesses. Go ahead. Blessed are ye that hunger now. Wasn't there famine? Mm -hmm. Weren't they hidden in caves? Mm -hmm. Eating bread and water? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For ye shall be filled. Mm -hmm. Blessed are ye that weep now. Weren't they crying because other prophets have been martyred? For ye shall laugh. Mm -hmm. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. Akab says to Eliyahu, are you, are you here, the one who troubles Israel? Israel? You're the one that troubles Israel. He says this to the prophet Eliyahu. Mm. So Ahab, Akab hates him. Go ahead. And when they shall separate you from their company mm -hmm. and shall reproach you and cast out 
your name as evil. Wasn't uh, Eliyahu's name evil? Mm -hmm. Wasn't he a fugitive? Mm -hmm. His name was evil for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. For the son of man's sake. Okay, verse 22. Okay. Blessed are ye when man shall hate you, mm -hmm. and when they shall separate you from their company, Go ahead. And, sh and shall reproach you, uh -huh. and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Rejoice in that day. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, mm -hmm. for in the like manner did their fathers unto, unto the, the prophets. Prophet. So, our God means father's brother. So, he did like unto their fathers, killing the prophets. Wow. 24. Verse 24. But woe unto you that are rich. For ye have received your consolation. Verse 26. This is what I wanted to get to. Verse 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Ah, Ab, Ahab, father's brother. Everyone speaks well of Ahab. For so he kills 450 prophets and the children of Israel don't even blink an eye. Hmm. They're okay with his government. They're okay with Jezebel and rulership. They see no problem with Ahab and Jezebel. They're rich, they're wealthy, they're successful. He was successful in his military uh, campaigns. The people love him. But the prophets and the saints are in hiding. They're in tribulation while the rest of the people rejoice. This is how it's going to be when the beast system arises. The true saints will be in mourning, and the world will be rejoicing, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Do you have any comments? Yes, we have a few comments. All right. Um, Asarel... Um, Shimshon says the apocalypse of Elijah goes into detail about them returning. Mm -hmm. Camp Thought said America was at its peak during World War II mm -hmm. and it's been in decline ever since, according to my research. America's claim was we are saving the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. All the while treating the true, ch the true children of the Most High horribly. In America. Very true. Uh, Nigel Janiker says, I watch police audit videos every day and I see that USA is literally a police state. Yes, it is. Amen. He says, your rights and laws are trampled upon daily by ill-informed police. Sister Isabel says, I saw a video where they received judgment during one of their festivals in Israel. Over 44 killed and over 100 injured. Yes. That happened right after they started persecuting our people over there. It's an hourglass. I think it was 46 families, and if I'm correct, I think it was 46 people died. 46 fake Jews died and they're removing 46, they're expelling 46 families. And Kemp Thought um, posted a quote from Thomas Jefferson. It says, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, that his justice cannot sleep forever. Mm. Hold on. That's deep. Mm. That's deep right there. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. Mm. That's it. Okay, go ahead. All right, um, verse 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well Our of you. Archive means father's brother or my father's friend. So he's cool with most people. Most people are okay and love him, actually, because he allows them to do every kind of sin that they want to do at the expense of the prophets and breaking the commandments of Yah and Yehoshua. 
So the people love him. The reprobates love him. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Mm -hmm. So that's what is going on. So the false prophets are loved and the true prophets are hated. So Ahab says to Eliyahu, are, are, are you come the one who troubles Israel? They hate Eliyahu and love the false prophets. And it's the same way today. So let's go back now to uh, 1 Kings 18. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, and at verse 18. Okay. And he answered, I have not troubled Yisrael. Eliyahu, Elijah is a virgin, a eunuch. He is the one who's able to stand up to this. That means he is extremely chaste. It takes chaste men to be able to confront Ahab and Jezebel and succeed. So if you're not a virgin, you have to be chaste. You can't be in fornication. If you're married, then do things in righteousness. But don't get into fornication because the moment you do, Yah cannot use you. The greatest ongoing battle of Yehoshua against Satan is played out in the battle of Elijah versus Jezebel. Adam fell because of fornication. Satan tricked and deceived Eve into becoming the first Jezebel. So if we cannot overcome that sin, we cannot be used for the kingdom's purposes. Because we will succumb to the same old trick over and over and over again. Satan hasn't come with any new, any new tricks. He hasn't come with any new uh, anything. There's nothing new under the sun. He still approaches us and comes with the same manipulation and witchcraft that he used against Adam and Eve. And if we haven't learned from that, in these last days, we can't be used effectively for the kingdom. And if you can't be used effectively for the kingdom, then you are out of your purpose. And if you're out of your purpose or out of your anointing or out of your calling as an Israelite, then that's when Yah can, I mean, not Yah, that's when the devil can come and take you down because you're not walking in your purpose. When you're walking in your purpose, Satan cannot, he cannot kill you. You are anointed and you're called to fulfill a mission. And as long as you're on that mission, he cannot do it. But if you're overcome by fornication, excuse me, <clears throat> if you're overcome by fornication, then that's when the adversary can actually take you off your calling and then can do harm. Verse 18, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, neither have I but thou. And thy father's house, mm -hmm. and that ye have forsaken the commandments of Yahuwah, and thou hast followed Balaam. Mm. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves, four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. So there's nine hundred and fifty false prophets. 450 prophets of Baal and 400 who eat at Jezebel's table. That's 950 prophets. And Eliyahu stood alone. He didn't need anyone with him. He had Yehoshua with him. So shall it be in these last days when the two witnesses come. This is a reflection of what's going to happen with the two witnesses. They will contend against a multitude of false prophets, and it's going to be broadcast around the world. This was a showdown in the public square. In these last times, we're going to see the false prophets, and they're going to arise against the two witnesses. And they won't be able to stand against the two witnesses because they're coming in the power and the divine might of Yehoshua the Hamashiach. So, 
Not only must you be chaste, but it says, Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's or Isabel's table. Let's go to Revelations 2 and 17. Two and twenty, actually. Let's do two and twenty. All right. We're in the book of Revelation. Yeah, like, uh, I'm sorry. Let's do right. let's do two and eighteen. Two let's and get 18. the whole concept. Yeah. Okay. We're in the book of Revelations. <clears throat> Hickelute in Hebrew, chapter two, beginning at verse eighteen. And unto the angel of the assembly in Thyatira, write. These things saith the son of Elohim, who hath his eyes like unto flames of fire, mm -hmm. and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. This is talking to the congregation, the assembly of Theotira. These are supposed to be believers, as was the children of Israel in the days of Akab or Ahab. They were supposed to be believers. These are Israelites. Go ahead. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because? Because thou sufferest that woman Isabel. They tolerate Jezebel. They suffer Jezebel. They suffer the wickedness of a witch because she's fair to look upon. Because she's famous. Because she's rich. Everything that Yehoshua just said in Luke chapter 6. Woe to ye who are rich. And woe to you who everyone speaks well of. This is what our people did with Ahab and Jezebel. They spoke well of them. Even though they were killers of the prophets of Yah. Read. Which calleth herself a prophet. She anoints herself a prophetess. She's not called of Yah. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. This is Baal worship. Baal or Baalim worship is committing fornication in your worship. Creating abomination. Go ahead though. As we read in the beginning in Revelation, the whore of Babylon had a cup of adultery and fornication. This is Jezebel. Go ahead. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. 1 Kings 18 again. 1 Kings 18, uh, verse, uh, verse 19. 1 Kings 18 and 19. Now therefore, now therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which, which eat did eat at, at Jezebel's table. So they're eating things sacrificed to idols. Mm. From the Old Testament down to today's time. Yehoshua spoke on this. John wrote on it, but it happened from the days of Ahab to now. So when you see people going to Hooters, you see this sports bar, right? What's the symbol for Hooters? Ow. Baal. Molech. Molech is the symbol. That's an owl, the owl god where they would do human sacrifices. And then the women addressed how? For fornication. Mm -hmm. So you're eating things sacrificed to idols. You're eating at Jezebel's table. This is in every neighborhood. How many of our people go to the strip club and then they get wings and then they get uh, shrimp or they get uh, drinks or they get, uh, what else do they sell in these places? 
you know, uh, finger foods and all of these things. This is what our people do. This is culturally part of black American culture. It's infiltrated. So they go to these places and then they eat the food that is there and they drink the wine that is there and you have women dancing around in fornication. Down to today's time within the Israelite community today. Mm -hmm. These things are literally happening. So they could never really contend against Jezebel. Verse 20. So Akab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. And Eliyahu came unto all the people and said, How long caught ye, ye between, between two opinions? Days. How long are you going to stand on the fence, Israel? How long are you going to suffer and tolerate wickedness because of the person is famous? Or because, hey, uh, uh, you know, like I said, they won wars under Ahab, so he got certain carnal victories. And we're celebrating in other people's victories while the true things of the spirit are being destroyed, and we're okay with that. As long as they're successful, we feel like we share in that false success. How long are you going to be double-minded? Yes. If Yehoah be Elohim, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And, and many of the people in Israel have theophoric names. A theophoric name is a name that has Yah in it. So they're serving Baal, but they have Hebrew names that glorify Yah at the same time. And the people answered him not a word. Why? Yehoshua calls this in Revelations. Lukewarm. Mm -hmm. I wish you were hot, hot or cold. cold. But because you are not hot or cold and you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. So this is a sign that we are to be prepared for in these last days. It will go down much the same. We must make sure that we are hot for the most high. All the way to the end. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Then said Eliyahu unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of Yehovah. So now, Eliyahu stands alone, but in the last days, he's going to send him a companion. You'll see two witnesses contending against this. But Baal's prophet. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every matter be established so the battle was not completed because Eliyahu stood alone. In the last days, there will be two witnesses to finish this battle, to overcome Jezebel, and then when they overcome Jezebel, then the beast comes to make war against them. But we see that the harlot rides the beast, but then the world shall hate the harlot and shall burn her with fire. And then the beast comes up. So these two witnesses are going to be instrumental in America's judgment. And then when the beast system rises up in this place, more than likely it will not last more than seven years total. And the two witnesses will be prophesying for three and a half years, three and a half days, until such a time that the beast overpowers them and kills them. And then what happens to their bodies? They're left in the streets. For how long? Three and a half, three and a half days. And then after that three and a half days, Yah brings a judgment. But those two bodies rise up and ascend into heaven as Enoch and Eliyahu ascended up the first time. So three and a half years of the two witnesses preaching, then them being overcome, then three and a half years of their body laying around before the final judgment, 
That means seven years. Wow. So after Babylon falls, the world is only going to have seven years. And we're getting closer and closer to the fall of Babylon. We're getting closer and closer to a one world currency. Cryptocurrency is probably the beginnings of this. We're getting closer and closer to these things. Are you ready? Are you getting your house in order? Are you getting your faith on fire for the Most High God? Hallelujah. 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 Verse 22. Then said Eliyahu unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of Yehovah, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And call ye on the name of your Elohim and I will call on the name of Yehovah. And the Elohim that answereth by fire, let him be Elohim. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. The same thing now happens in the book of Daniel. So let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 2. Actually, chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. They're having a big showdown, and the prophets of Baal are gathering all of the kingdom to worship Baal. This idol, this anti-Messiah image. Let's start. Let's start at Verse 1. Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. All right. We are in the book of Daniel. That's Daniel in Hebrew, mm -hmm. chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. The height was six score cubits, three score cubits, which is 60 cubits. Its breadth was six cubits, and if the breadth was equal on all sides around, that means the depth was also six cubits. Six, six, six. So you, let me illustrate that really quickly. We have the height. Let's say that's the, the, the head and the, the body and legs and so forth. Uh, we have the height was 60 cubits. And what did it say, the depth? The breadth the is breadth. six cubits. All right, the breadth was six cubits. But more than likely, the breadth was the same as the width, which was six cubits. So you see the image was six, six, six. Okay? You take away... The zero, the zero means nothing. From the six, you got six, you got six, you got six. Go ahead. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babel. Babel, which is where Jezebel rules in the last days, is it not? 
Nebuchadnezzar, the king sent to gather together the princes. Nebu is the name of the false god of the ancient Babylonians. Netzar means to keep, like Netzarit. And Nebuchadnezzar, I have to try to discern the rest of that name. But Nebu was their god's name that they worshiped. So he's a keeper of that God, more than likely. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces. That's what Eliyahu said. He told Ahab, bring everybody down to the square. Bring everybody down to the middle. Of, bring them all down to the stadium. Because we're about to have a game here. We're going to see who's going to win, whose team is going to be victorious. Yehoshua versus the rest of you. <laughs> let's, let's see who wins. To come to the dedication of the image. To come to the dedication of the image, uh huh. With Nebuchadnezzar, the king had set up. What happens with the beast in the last day? He sets up what? An image. An image. And the false prophet does what? Gives life to it. Let's go to it. Revelation 13. Thirteen and fifteen. Well, let's do it. Fourteen. Okay. Thirteen. Sleek out. We are in the book of Revelations, Higgalut in Hebrew, chapter thirteen, starting at verse thirteen. Mm -hmm. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth. He said the Elohim that answers by fire mm -hmm. shall prevail. So now we have a situation where the anti-Messiah is causing fire to come down because he's trying to be like the Messiah. So now they cause fire to come down when at first it was Eliyahu who caused fire to come down. Eliyahu first called fire to come down from heaven. The beasts in these last days will cause fire to come down from heaven. The two witnesses will cause Jehoshua to come down from heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. Um, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on earth by the means of those miracles. That's what those 450 prophets of Baal were doing. They're trying to do miracles, right? Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should that they should make an make image, his image to the beast to the beast which has a wound by, by a sword, sword and did live. So in ancient Babylon, in the days of Daniel, that's what they were doing. Mm -hmm. They set up an image of the beast, and they also set up a fire to throw the three Hebrew boys into. The Elohim that answers by fire. Let him be Elohim. Let him be Elohim. So Yehoshua answered by fire. They said the son of Elohim, the son of God, is in that fire with them three boys. Then we throw three in there. I see four. He answered by fire. Let's go. Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. Bashem Yehoshua. The book of Daniel, Daniel in Hebrew, chapter 3, beginning at verse 3. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces 
were gathered together into the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. He's the beast. He sets up an image. Go ahead. Then a herald cried aloud. The false prophet. To you it is commanded, O people, nation, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, that at what time ye hear the sound of the music industry. So now Babylon is set up entertainers, singers, rappers, actors, Hollywood, for this purpose. So we can barely find any movies today without Satan influ influence into it. You can barely listen to any secular artist without Satan's influence in the music. You can't watch a music video without Satan influencing it. So he uses his entertainers who are the false prophets of this day and age. You know, we get distracted by the rappers who are dying now, untimely deaths, who's, who, um, there's so many things now happening in the entertainment industry. They're being sacrificed for this beast to rise again. We had three rappers die within about one to two weeks period of time. All of them influential. That is because, just as we're going to see, when Eliyahu confronted these false prophets, what did they start doing? They started cutting themselves. Mm -hmm. They started the shedding of blood to bring about false signs and wonders of their demonic God. So now we're seeing the shedding of blood. We're seeing these entertainers, rappers, actors, their blood is being shed to bring about this beast. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nation, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet? You can't even listen to gospel music, so-called. A lot of the gospel artists are part of it as well. You see them making demonic hand signs. You see the women dressed scantily clad, and a lot of the men are feminine. They call all of the people, all of the, all of the people, all of the governors and the people in positions of power. This is what's going on right now. The president it has the uh, transsexuals in, in, in government now. That at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, decimer, and all kinds of music. All kinds of music. That means rap. That means R&B. That means gospel. That means country. That means uh, rock. That means jazz. Jazz. And on and on and on and on. All kinds of music. Satan has infiltrated all kinds of music to bring about this one world order. Go ahead. Ye fall down and worship the golden image. So when you hear the music, when you watch the movies, when you see the videos, it's all designed to make you worship. So when you see the music videos and they start throwing up all them hand signs, the music is designed to make you worship Satan. You watch the movie, and at the beginning of the movie, they show uh, 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 the woman holding the torch, right? Mm -hmm. Columbia. Columbia Pictures. Columbia is uh, a, a, a demon, a female demon angel. 
Universal pictures, you see the mountain and the, the stars fall from heaven and they, for, they form a circle around the mountain. That's the watches falling from heaven around a pyramid. I mean, all of these things are designed to make us worship. So when we hear the music, you watch the films, the films have soundtracks. The music in the soundtrack is dedicated to, the, to, to Satan. You're watching a film, you're hearing the music, and your mind subconsciously is trying to make us worship the beast. We have comments? Uh, yeah, we got a few comments. Um, Israel's Child says, have mercy. Our time on this earth is not long again. Earth's last scene are unfolding, and we have to get our houses mm. in order. Angela Byrne says, all praises to Yehovah and Yehoshua. Great teaching, Jediah. We needed this. Praise Yah for the inspiration by the Ruach HaKodesh. And we have a praise report. Hallelujah. Um, I believe we prayed for him last week or the week before. Um, Raphael Simpson says, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpika. All praises to the Most High for another great day. My Ema is COVID free today. Praise oh God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we want all of our family to pray for Brother Israel Lewis and for his son Elijah. Keep them in your prayers. Hallelujah. That's it. Okay. So, they set up all kinds of music to make us fall down and worship the golden image. So we must guard our eye gates and we must guard our ear gates and even our mouth gate because Jezebel wants us to eat things sacrificed to idols. Okay? We must guard all the gates to our body, all of them. So that the adversary cannot enter in the steel. All right. So after all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. So Eliyahu was the only one who didn't fall down to worship the beast. What about the rest of the people? They answered not a word. Eliyahu went to them, who's on your side, stand here. And who's not, stand on that side. And what did the people do? They can't. So Eliyahu was the only one who didn't fall down, and the rest were in hiding. You still had the prophets hiding in caves. Right? Mm -hmm. So on the last day, when the two witnesses come, it's going to be the same thing. They will contend against Jezebel and Ahab, or against the whore of Babylon and the beast. Verse 7. Verse 7. Oh, verse 6. Did we see? Yeah, verse 7. Do 6 again. Verse 6, all right. Verse 6. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery fire. So here we go. As they said in the time of Eliyahu, the Elohim that answers by fire shall be the one that's victorious. So here we have the fire again. So the fire represents what? Tribulation. Tribulation. Being refined. Mm -hmm. Being made go. So when you go through the fire, are you going to burn up or will you just be purified? Because all believers have to go through the fire in one way or the, or the other. Will you burn or will you be made clean and pure? Will you be refined? Hallelujah. 
Verse 7. Verse 7. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans, Chaldeans. came near and accused the Yehudim. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Chaldeans and Chaldeans are synonymous with magicians, sorcerers. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet. This is the third time they're mentioning all of these instruments. They mentioned it three times and we're only at verse 10. Three of these ten verses show you just how much they relied on this industry to deceive the people. So as you see uh, different rappers and entertainers dying and so forth, remember to keep your eyes on your Yehoshua. Remember to keep your eyes on these things because they shed their blood in order to bring about this beast. They're making sacrifices to bring about this system. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he shall be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Yehudim whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Or Elijah, Eliyahu, same thing. The two witnesses, same thing. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy own heen, Hallelujah. nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, Ahab commanded to bring Eliyahu. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. All right, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now let's go back to 1 Kings. Any comments in the meantime? Mm. Um, Kenya says, interesting that you mention movies. Just watch without remorse and seems to show predictive programming showing Isaiah 59 and 19 when the flood comes in against us. Mm. Beginning at 12 seconds and 19 seconds with the room flooding as troops come in to capture Michael B. Jordan. Mm. Yeah, and that's it. Okay. And so, Akka, um, 1 Kings 18 and 20, just like Nebuchadnezzar gathered, gathered all the people, so Ahab does the same thing. Mm hmm. The book of First Kings, chapter 18, and verse 20. So Akab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Eliyahu came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If Yehovah be Elohim, follow him. But if they all, then follow him. Let's go down to be with that. Mm -hmm. Let's go down to uh, verse 25 now. Mm -hmm. Verse 24, it said, The Elohim that acts by fire, let him be Elohim. Mm -hmm. Verse 25. Verse 25. And Eliyahu said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one block for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many. And call on the name of your Elohim, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and they called on the name of Baal, from morning even until noon, saying, Oh, they all hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. So in this situation, as you see here, um, 
He said the Elohim that answers by fire, let him be Elohim. So here they put no fire under it. But by the time we get to Daniel's day and age, they lit the fire under it. And by the time we get in these last days, there's going to be a fire that comes down from heaven. See the progression? It gets more intense. Go ahead. And it came to pass at noon that El Yahu mocked them and said, <laughs> Cry aloud, for he is an Elohim. Either he is talking or he is pursuing <laughs> or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked. And they cried aloud and cut themselves. And they cut themselves. So now they have to shed blood. So this is what happened when you're seeing celebrities dying now all of a sudden. They're shedding their blood. They're shedding their blood now. Because uh, time is running out. So now they're at noon and they're, they're crying out to Baal and all this time he hasn't answered them. And now it's noon time and Eliyahu is mocking them. Time is now short so now they got to speed up and now they start shedding blood. Verse 28, and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out upon them. And so the whore of Babylon has a cup of the blood of the saints, but she has blood. She sheds blood of all kinds of people. This is what Jezebel was known of doing. Go ahead. Verse 29, and it came to pass when midday was passed. And they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. So, man, they started at 7 in the morning and go on to 9 at night. <laughs> All day long. Go ahead. That there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And nobody even cared anymore. It said no one regarded. So, like, they was all celebrating and dancing and playing music at the beginning. But by the time the end, people just like. They can't work. <laughs> <laughs> Is anything going to happen? Down. Yeah. So by then, everyone's just, you know, they're tired. They're ready to go home. Verse 30. <laughs> and Eliyahu said unto all the people, Come near unto me. Mm -hmm. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of Jehovah that was broken down. Mm. And Eliyahu... So, the true... Faith has to be restored in the last days. So Yah's going to call these two witnesses. They're going to restore the true faith and the altar that was broken down. They're going to make it known how to, how to worship Yah in spirit and in truth through Yehoshua HaMashiach. They're going to restore this on the earth because there's so much confusion through all of the false doctrine that Yah has to set things right again. Go ahead. Verse 31. And Eliyahu took 12 stones, according to the number of tribes. And they're going to start to put the 12 tribes in order again. You're going to see the 12 tribes become reconciled. We won't need a chart anymore for the 12 tribes. <laughs> You're going to see. <laughs> Everyone with that 12 tribe chart is going to throw it in trash. You're going to see the real tribes arise throughout the four corners of the earth. Go ahead. According to the number of tribes of the sons of Yaakov, unto whom the word of Yahweh came, saying, Yisrael shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of Yahweh, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. The stones represents the people. The patriarchs, and they built the altar. The altar is made out of them. They start to make sacrifices unto the Most High, fasting and praying, weeping and crying out. Go ahead. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces. The wood is the cross. Yehoshua is the bullock. He is the aleph in the towel. Aleph represents the bull, the ox head. Mm. Amen. And laid him on the wood mm -hmm. and said... Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Pour out the Ruach HaKodesh. 
upon it. Hallelujah. And he said, do it the second time. In our time, Jehoshua is coming back the second time around. Hallelujah. And they did it the second time. Amen. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. The third time is probably for the kingdom. Go ahead. And the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, indwells the people. In, indwells their praying and their sacrifices and, and their uh, fasting. Verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. It didn't take long for Eliyahu to do what he had to do. Go ahead. That Eliyahu, the prophet, came near and said, Yehoah, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yisrael, let it be known this day that thou art Elohim in Yisrael, and that I am thy servant. And I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Yehoah, hear me, that this people may know that thou art Yehoah Elohim, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Amen. Then the fire of Yehoah fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Amen. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces. Now, and they was said, basically asleep by the time Ahab's prophets <laughs> was doing their thing. They said they wouldn't even regard it no more. Now the people jump up and fall down on their faces and say, Yehoah, he is the Elohim. Yehoah, he is the Elohim. Amen. Yehoah, he is the Elohim. And Eliyahu said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Eliyahu brought them down to the brook of Kishon, and slew them there. And Eliyahu said unto Akab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Now the latter rain falls down. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, has returned among the people. Because now the blood has been shed of the false prophets who killed the true prophets. Atonement has been made. Yes. Why didn't um, Elijah try to kill Ahab too? That's for the last days. Ahab is in the stead of the beast. The beast, you know, is going to overcome the two uh, witnesses and it's for Yehoshua himself. Yehoshua himself, himself is going to kill the beast. No one else gets that honor. Verse 42. So Akab went up to eat and drink, and Eliyahu went to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. So he goes to praise and worship while the other people are going to eat and drink. And he said to his servants, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. He said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's head. Behold the hand, behold the nail. Jehoshua comes on the clouds. And he said, go up. Say unto Akab, prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Akab rode and went to Yisrael. This is the uh, latter or rain. Israel, I'm sorry. Israel. Mm -hmm. There shall be seed. Israel. Yisrael is Israel. Israel. It's Jezreel. Mm -hmm, Jezreel. Mm -hmm. This shall be a seed of Elohim. So now the seed of Elohim is being watered by the latter rain. That means a harvest is coming. And the hand of Yehovah was on Eliyahu 
and he girded up his loins and ran before Akal to the entrance of Jezreel. So Eliyahu is now telling Ahab, go get thee to Jezreel, get in your horse and ride. Eliyahu stays back and he prays. And he's telling his servant to go check on the weather. And Eliyahu, I mean, and Ahab is almost near, near to Jezreel, and then Eliyahu just gets up and runs like the flash, literally, and beats Ahab there. Read it again. Verse 46. And the hand of Yehoah was on Eliyahu, and he girded up his loins and ran before Akab to the entrance of Yezreel. And verse 44 says, Prepare the chariot and go and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. He's on a horse. <laughs> or horses pulling the chariot. He goes, but Eliyahu runs by foot and gets there first. This is the power of the gospel to spread throughout the four corners of the earth. This is represented by the tribe Naphtali. He was swift of foot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Verse 19. Chapter 19. All right. We're in um, 1 Kings, chapter 19. Malachim, Rishon, chapter 19, verse 1. And Ahab told Isabel all that Eliyahu had done and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Mm. Then Isabel sent a messenger unto Eliyahu, so saying... So Isabel hits Eliyahu in his DM. She sends a message to him, a private message. Go ahead. So let the Elohim do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So... She sends a death threat to the prophet of Yah after he got the victory. So what happens? And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. He runs for his life. And came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Yehuda, and left his servant. He there. runs for his life and even leaves his servant. Because Jezebel, like Babylon the Great, has the whole earth under her spell. And if he was to kill Jezebel, then the whole nation of Israel would hate him and come after him. And if the nation of Israel came against Eliyahu, then Yah will come against the whole nation of Israel. So this battle has to come to an end and continue at a later time. We're in that time right now. We're in the time where Yah is going to Raise the two witnesses out of the virgins and out of the eunuchs of the nation of Israel. He's going to raise the 144,000 out of the eunuchs and the chaste of Israel. This is the time for the eunuchs of the kingdom to gird their loins. Because out of them, y'all are going to call the witnesses, the two witnesses, and the 144,000. And they must be the ones to finish this battle that started with Eliyahu. And it's they who will contend and get the victory over Jezebel. And it's through their preaching and fire coming out of their mouth. Literal fire. And them being able to turn the blood to water and create famines around the world that's going to get the earth's attention. That will make them see the power of the Most High Yah and that judgment is at hand. And from that time, you'll see the people divide. Some will follow after Ahab and some will follow after Obadiah. Hallelujah. 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 What comments we got? 
Uh, King Elijah said, I always wondered why he fled after defeating the prophets of Baal. Jamila uh, Rivera says, the brother has been doing his thing these days. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, she also said, I want to thank you now for the lesson. I will be watching it again. I am into this lesson like I am at the movies with popcorn and a sandwich. This lesson is... <laughs> <laughs> Brother Lee G says, being able to be ordered by our tribes and receive our identity is beautiful. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. I'm sick of this world. Amen. Arnell Robinson said, I can't help but to notice the word music has the word muse and sick within it, self-explanatory. Right. Hallelujah. Revelation 17 and 18. You can read it here. Oh, Revelations, uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and verse 18. And the woman which Jezebel thou sawest is the great city which reigneth, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Jezebel, if Eliyahu was to kill her, she reigned over all the kings of the earth. Ahab sent into all the kingdoms looking for Eliyahu. He thought Eliyahu wasn't even in the land of Israel anymore. He thought he fled to some other place. This is why he fled for a later time, for this time. Because the nation of Israel might have been destroyed. They just finished a three and a half year famine. And that wasn't enough to get Israel to repent. Then they have this confrontation and then Jezebel threatens his life and then he has to leave, it, leave again because if they killed Eliyahu and they just finished a three and a half year fa famine, what do you think y'all would have did then? He might have destroyed the whole earth. But now in the last days, he will destroy the whole earth. So he's sending Eliyahu back with Enoch. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Gospel of Nicodemus chapter 22, I think. Okay, no, uh, verse, uh, chapter um, 25. This is when Yehoshua goes down into hell to rescue all of the saints. All right. The Gospel of Nicodemus, chapter 25. But Yehoshua, holding the hand of Adam, delivered him unto Mikael the great prince. And all the saints followed Mikael, the great prince. And he brought them all into the glory and grace of the Garden of Eden. They're in Sheol. They're in hell. Yehoshua sends all of the saints to Mikael, and then Mikael brings them up into heaven, out of hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Setting the captives free. And there met with them two men. Ancients of days. And when they were asked of the saints, Who are ye that have not yet been dead in hell with us and are set in the Garden of Eden in the body? Now, when they got there, these two men were already in the Garden of Eden, but they were not the angels. Go ahead. Then one of them answering said, I am Kanok. Enoch. Which was translated hither by the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. And this is that with me, and this that is with me is, is Eliyahu, Eliyahu, the Tishbeam, 
which was taken up in a chariot of fire. The Elohim that answers by fire. And up to this day, we have not tasted death. But we are received unto the coming of Anti-Mashiach mm. to fight against him with signs and wonders mm. of Elohim. And, and to, to be, be slain, slain of him, him in, Jerusalem. in Jerusalem. So now they're getting rid of the Israelites in Jerusalem right now. The Israelites that live in the land of Israel, they're casting them out right now. What do you think it's going to be like by the time the two witnesses get there? And after three days and a half to be taken up again alive on the cross. So three days and a half or three and a half years, their bodies have to lie there. The remainder and the last of the time that the beast will actually rule. They prophesy three and a half years and then... Their bodies are slain and laid there for three and a half years, and then the end comes. 26. Um, verse 26, I mean, chapter 26. And as Kanok and Eliyahu spake thus with the saints. So we got one witness, two witness. Behold, there came another man of vile habit, bearing upon his shoulders the sign of the cross, mm -hmm. whom when they beheld, all the saints said unto him, Who art thou? For thine appearance is as of a robber, and wherefore is it that thou bearest a sign upon thy shoulders? Mm -hmm. And he answered them and said, Ye have rightly said, for I was a robber, doing all manner of evil upon the earth. And the Yehudim crucified me with Yehoshua. So we have the criminal who was on the right side of Yehoshua, who was crucified, mm -hmm. who Yehoshua said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Now here he is, hallelujah, hallelujah. carrying the cross of Yah mm -hmm. in the kingdom. And I beheld the wonders in the creation which came to pass through the cross of Yehoshua when he was crucified. And I believe that he was the maker of all creatures and the almighty king. And I besought him, saying, Remember, Remember me, Adonai, when thou comest, when thou into, comest thy into thy kingdom. And forthwith he received my prayer and said unto me, Verily I say unto thee, this day shall thou be with me in the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. And he gave me the sign of the cross saying, bear this and go up unto the garden of Eden. And if the angel that keepeth the garden of Eden suffer thee not to enter in, show him the sign of the cross and thou shalt say unto him, Yehoshua HaMashiach, the son of Elohim, who now is crucified, have sent me. Hallelujah. We must carry our cross. Hallelujah. 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 When we carry our cross and follow after Yehoshua, that is our key into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And when I had so done, I spake all these things unto the angel that keepeth the garden of Eden. And when he heard this of me, forthwith he, he opened, opened the, the door. door. Hallelujah. Carry your cross. Bear your persecutions and your afflictions. Go through the fire. That's our key in. That's how we're made in the image of Elohim. Forthwith, he opened the door and brought me in and set me at the right hand of the Garden of Eden, saying, Lo, now, tarry a little. And Adam, the father of all mankind, will enter in with all his children that are holy and righteous after the triumph and glory of the ascending up of Hamashiach Yehoshua that is crucified. When they heard all these words of the robber, all the holy patriarchs and prophets said with one voice, Blessed, Blessed be Yehovah Almighty, the Father, the father of eternal, eternal good things, things the Father of mercies, Thou that hast given such grace unto thy sinners, and hast brought them again into the beauty of the Garden of Eden, and into thy good pastures. For this is the most holy life of the Ruach. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen.
Well, Shabbat Shalom, family. Um, again, we want to thank you all for spending your Shabbat day with us, for joining us, um, and for continuing to fellowship with us. We pray that this lecture from Brother Jediah um, was um, as edifying for you guys as it was for us. Um, we pray that the Most High Yah keeps you and blesses you. Um, do take time out now to like the video, share the video, thumbs up the video on all your social media platforms. You can also take this time to um, pay your tithes, your donations are your alms. You can do that at Zelle at kayeshua at gmail.com. You can also do that at Cash App at um, dollar sign Kayashua. You can also go over to the website Kayashua for slash tithes and offering. Click that yellow donate button and you can do your tithes, your donation, your alms, whatever the Ruach leads you to do. We thank you. We bless you. We're praying for health and wellness for you all. Um, I do believe we're going to say a prayer. Yeah. And then after the prayer, you guys can start posting your questions for the Q&A portion of this lecture. Amen. Blessed be thy name, Yehovah Eloheinu, Elohe, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yisrael, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Yisrael, Modi, Manaku, Laka, Bishbil, Kayenu, Al, and HaShabbat Nazeh. We give thanks unto you for this Shabbat day. Torah, Yehovah, Lekod, Ebarim. We thank you, Yehovah, for all things. Torah, Yehovah, Bishbil, Hakita, Hazeh, Shena, Tata, Lanu. We thank you for this class that you have given us. Teach us your Torah, all of your Torah. And write it within our hearts. And let not Satan steal one word. From our hearts. Uh, Anaknu Shalim Bishwell Shalom Bishavua Haba. And we ask you for peace and shalom in the week which is to come. Tishmor Alenu Bavakwasha. Watch over us. Wasalak Lanu Kokata Ainu. And forgive us for all of our sins. Rakatsenu Badam Hakavets. And wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Ataha Nishon. Ataha Akron, you are the first and the last. Ataha Aleph, Ataha Tau, you are the, the Aleph and the Tau. Ata uh, Melech Hagado, you are the great king. Ata uh, Yehoshua HaMashiach, uh, uh, Moshienu, you are Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Messiah. ain't no Elohei Kamoka, and there is no Elohim like unto you. Torah Yehoah, the Ruach Kakma. Uh, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Ravakwisha Yehoah. Tishlak Eduk Shelkai. Send forth your witnesses. Eliyahu Wagam Chanok. Lebasar Habasora Beko Kates Haaris. Send forth Eliyahu and Kano to preach the gospel throughout the ends of the earth. Well, uh, Hoshienu miyad hara and send the, and and save us from the hand of the evil one. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Yehoshua's name. Avinu sheba shemayim yikuda shemka tavo mal kuteka yaser etzonka karashir keba shemayim gamba aris tain la nuet lekum zarkenu hayom umakal la nuet kovatenu. Kamoshe Gam and Aku Makam will the Kaya Venu, while Altabiano the Dana Sion, Ella Hatsi Lenu Minara, Kishoka, he had my boots, while Hadu Pora, while the Fela, the old male of me, by Shem Yehoshua, Hallelujah, Amen. 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 Um, and I just want to remind you guys of one more thing. Um, do remember that at sundown, at the end of your Shabbat day, wherever you are, you can go to HebrewIsraeliteScriptures.com and you can add onto your book library. Um, I've got the His Word Gold Edition here, which is the only uh, version of this in, it's the number one Hebrew Bible um, in the Israelite community. So we're grateful for that to the Most High Yah. We've got two books for you. If you're learning the language, we 
we've got the Testament of Yahshua, which is in Hebrew and in English. And you have the four Gospels and Revelations here. And the, the one great thing about the Testament of Yahshua is it's the first of the writings that we kind of came across that actually outline anything in the New Testament that's in Hebrew. Um, we also have the Book and Secrets of Enoch um, in Hebrew and English as well. Very good read, profound, give you more um, understanding of things that are precepted are spoken about in the 66 books, but you get a very good understanding here in the book of Enoch, Amen. which is he was the person that wrote those things first. We have the His Word Concordance for you guys looking for new names. It gives names and the, you know, the different meanings of the names. We also have the Lost Acts of the Holy Apostles which outlines the loss, the lives of the apostles um, when they walked the earth um, during the time Yehoshua was here and after he ascended up into heaven. Very, very profound book. Very, very profound book. Um, it will definitely make you um, do a self-inventory of your own walk. We also have Yosef, the lost prince of Israel, um, by the youth of the nation. Um, our very own Jedi Malek II. Um, and this also is a very good read for adults as well. So do add this into um, your collection. And last but not least, we have the Enoch calendar for 2021 and 2022. Beautiful pictures, a lot of information that you can find only here because this is the First and the official yeah. Enoch calendar. All other calendars, all other calendars derive from this calendar. Amen. So, family, um, if you're posting your questions, we'll go ahead and get into the Q&A portion. Sounds good to me. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? I'll just go ahead and ask the question now, and then I'll get back to that other question. Okay. All right. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Jamila asked, mm -hmm. will you provide the book of Jubilees and Joshir at some point? Yes, uh, be the most high as well. Um, we have some major, 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 major announcements to uh, announce Yahweh very shortly. Um, and soon after that announcement, you know, uh, we will be working on the Book of Jubilee to be the most high as well. That will be a project to come. Um, sometime after that but we have some major major announcements y'all willing to make praise y'all hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah and then after that at the be as well we will be working on jubilees yes all right and next question this was the question from earlier um dr yakova shalom brother asked this um respectfully why do you teach Revelations 11 as future and not historic? I heard your teachings today from the Baptist and Pentecostal church. So he's saying what you taught today, he heard it from the Baptist and Pentecostal church. Well, um, I got my revelations. Uh, I get them from above. I didn't get them from um, any um, video or any church or anything like that. Uh, Y'all can give testimony as to the topic of the study 
and when it was received and how, how long before we went live, I actually knew what I was gonna teach on. Yeah, it, it's never <laughs> in advance. It's always last minute, always last minute. Mm -hmm. Um, is it something also maybe like the fact of the Hebrew text that how it's written in the New Testament in terms of the tense will also speak to it being whether it's present or past? Um, what do you mean now? Because in his question, he said, why do you teach Revelation 11 as future and not historic? So that was the first part. Of the well, question. Revelation 11 talks about what will come that the two witnesses will come. Well, let's go to it. Let's uh, make sure that I'm understanding the question properly. We just go to it. Revelation 11. Let's see. Revelations 11 and 3 says, that's right here. Okay. Revelation 11 and 3. And I will give... Stop right there. Is that past tense or is that future tense? When you say, I will. That means to come. Right. Not so this now. is a prophecy that is to come. Okay. Read it one more time. I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they... And they shall... What does shall mean? It's to come. That's, that's why we're prophesying it as something that is to come. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Israel Child says, question. Based on the reading in Nicodemus, is it that Enoch, etc., will be coming back in the flesh? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Let's go to Hebrews, I think 10. Yeah. You know what I want? It's big. Okay, let me see if you got what I want. Go ahead. Well, I gotta get through it. Okay. Hebrews 9, say God. Hebrews 9, right before 10. Hebrews 9 and 27. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9 and verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Mm -hmm. So it's appointed to men once to die. So Hanok and Eliyahu, neither one of them died. So now they come back. To do so, um, but um, later in the book of, um, I think it's First Corinthians 15, uh, I think that's where it is, but it says, Paul says that there's a mystery that not everyone shall die, but um, it's appointed for the two witnesses to die once, um, and so that they can be um, resurrected and then rise up. And then bring down your whole show up for judgment. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Corinthians 15. Corinthians 12, 15. All right. Take another question. Mm -hmm. The next question Krista Elia says Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there will I bring you down, says. Yehoah. Cain. Does this scripture have something to do with Esau trying to. She didn't finish. Space flight. That's, um, that's probably what I'm assuming she's saying, but I don't want to assume, but. Trying to live on Mars. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, there's a big push right now. Elon Musk and all of the billionaires, um, the Edomite billionaires, a lot of them are. Dedicating of Donald Trump, Space Force, 
A lot of them are dedicated so much money and time trying to live on Mars and, and trying to get outside of the Earth. Why are they trying to get outside of the Earth other than to escape judgment? Mm -hmm. I thought space didn't actually exist. I thought it was like, um, I thought they made it up. Mm -hmm. It exists. It's the heavens. Oh. Mm -hmm. And trying to go to other stars or other planets. Um, planets in Hebrew is Mazel. Or, you know, you hear uh, uh, the uh, fake Jews, they say Mazel Tov sometimes. But uh, that means planet, uh, lucky planets. So they worship the, the sun, moon, and stars. So when they say good luck, it's actually a worship of the planets. But it, Mazel, uh, it's, it's Mazelot. It's like Mazel, it means the same thing. But mm. Mazel means like the planets, the, the, the constellation, the, the planets. And Mazaro is the same thing. You see the planets and the stars um, for telling um, the messianic uh, plan of salvation, Yehoshua's plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the only future that we're really supposed to be looking for by looking at those things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're trying to get to those locations to escape the judgment um, of Obadiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, son, I think you have that confused with them going on the moon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you got to confuse with. Oh, the moon landing really wasn't real. They really didn't do that. Right. Oh, that's yeah. what you got to confuse mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Yequa Amoth said, Did Eve eat fruit to call sin, or was she deceived by another nation of people in the garden? She, um, well, let's go to it. She ate fruit and, um, this fruit uh, also led her into fornication, which then she brought to Adam, and Adam ate it too. It wasn't any other nation or anything. The only other inhabitants on the earth right there were not other nations, but it was indeed fallen angels. Um, so uh, let's go to the book of Adam and Eve. We'll let's see what exactly happened. Let's go to the book of Adam and Eve. We're going to look for Adam. He tells Eve to explain to the children what she did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 15. 15. All right. Um, yeah. Adam and Eve will do 15. The book of Adam and Eve, chapter 15, starting at verse 1. And Kawa said unto them, Hear all my children and children's children. Kawa is Eve in Hebrew. Go ahead. And I will relate to thee how the enemy deceived us. When we were guarding the garden, each one the portion that was given to him from Elohim, and I guarded my lot, which was wonderful to me, the west and the south. And Satan went to Adam's lot where the male beasts were. For Elohim divided the beast to us, all the male beasts he gave to thy father, and all the females he gave unto me. And Satan spake to the serpent, saying, Rise up, come to me, and I will tell thee a word whereby thou mayest have profit. So the serpent and Satan were two different beings, but Satan entices the serpent. So it wasn't in, it wasn't any other nations or any false doctrines or anything like that. This was an actual serpent, um, and uh, it describes what the serpent looked like before it was cursed. But keep reading. And he arose and came to him. And Satan said to him, I have seen that thou art more subtle than all the beasts, and I have come to cancel thee. Why dost thou eat of Adam's meat and not of the fruit of the garden? And now rise up, and we will make him to be cast out of the garden and remove his wife as we were cast out through him. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't say anything about another nation, and this is Satan and the serpent. 
The serpent said unto him, I fear lest the anger of Elohim be wroth with me. And Satan said to him, Fear not, only be my vessel. Only be my vessel. So Satan possessed the serpent. And that's how they became one. Go ahead. And I will speak through thy mouth words to deceive him. Chapter 17. And suddenly the serpent took hold of a wall in the garden. And when the angels ascended to worship Elohim, it came to pass that Satan appeared in the form of an angel and praised Jehovah like one of the angels. Mm. I and saw I, Satan transform um, to, to. into an angel of light. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. That's what Paul was talking about. He was prophesying about how Satan transformed to an angel of light and deceived Eve. Go ahead. And I looked forth from the wall and saw him like the form of an angel. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Art thou Kawa? And I said, I am. And he said unto me, What art thou doing in the garden? And I said to him, Elohim set us to guard it and to eat of its fruit. And Satan answered me through the mouth of the serpent, Ye have done well, but ye do not eat of every tree in the garden. And verse 4 says, And Satan answered me through the mouth of the serpent. Mm -hmm. Then say Satan answered him through any other nation or any other people. And there's a doctrine that some camps have that there was nations that existed in, before Adam and Eve and that uh, they went, and, yeah, this is some, this is what I said, a lot of crazy doctrine that they'd be saying. And that's why they, a lot of them um, will not acknowledge these books because it, it cuts and utterly um, dismantles their false, uh, their, their false uh, doctrines and their false beliefs that is not scriptural. So um, they have a doctrine that Adam and Eve, uh, that the serpent was uh, basically Esau, was a man. It's talking about Esau, and and yeah, it's it's really out there, and that they were not the first man and, and woman. There was other nations already there, because um, their doctrine is that the white man is the devil. So to justify that, they have to change what happened in the garden, because if the devil is not a fallen angel, and if the devil is not a spiritual being, but he's an actual nation of Esau, then you got to try to find a way to write that into history where it doesn't fit. And that's why these questions come about. That's the source of that. That's the source of them uh, not having a spiritual understanding but relating everything to the flesh. So when you say the devil and they say, oh, the devil was the white man, then they don't understand the spirit. Though the white man may be the, the chosen people of the devil, just like uh, Jacob or Israelites were the chosen people of Yah, they may have been used primarily for purposes of evil um, by the devil uh, however they're not the same and so they rewrite they got to rewrite history in order to make it fit and that's where you get these things that there was other people before Adam and Eve because the devil was already there and so they got to say well it was other nations okay, I hope that answered the question okay alright and he has a little couple more parts with it he said, also, did Adam and Eve live in the garden with Nephilim? Nephilim uh, didn't come about until Genesis, the sixth chapter, um, when Azazel fell. And those fallen angels, when they mixed with women during that time, that's when the, the Nephilim first appeared. And are jinns biblical? Jinn is an Arabic word for devil, for demon. So jinn is just a demon. And is Satan Lucifer today? Yes, yeah, Satan is, is Lucifer. Lucifer is Halal in Hebrew. Uh, and um, he was a, once the covering cherub. Uh, 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 Ezekiel 38 talks about that. No, Ezekiel 28, see God talks about that. Isaiah 14 as well. All right. Gladys Wilson asks, so the 144 are still being chosen? I believe so. That's my belief. Uh, but uh, there's no way to tell 100%. But here's my here's why I believe that. We'll go to Revelations, uh, I think, 15.
quick second. Um, Is uh no, you know what I think I know what it is. It might be let me see. Yes, uh Revelation seven, start at verse one. All right. The book of Revelations, chapter seven, beginning at verse one. Mm -hmm. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Is angels holding back winds of destruction, a destroying wind from coming upon the whole earth. Go ahead. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, mm -hmm. having the seal of the living Elohim. He has a seal. Katam, het, I think tet. Tau and Mem equals seal. Let's see. Tau. Okay. Katam. Hebrew word H twenty eight fifty six Tau Mem Katan to close up, especially to seal, to make an end, to mark, to seal up or to stop. Okay. And Aramaic is the same word, Katan, to seal. All right. Verse 2. All right. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living Elohim, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. The four angels are probably the four horsemen of Revelation, given to destroy the earth. The white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the pale horse. To whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, mm -hmm. saying, Hurt, hurt not, not the earth, earth neither, neither the sea, nor, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our Elohim in their foreheads. And the and number we, of them which were sealed. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty four thousand of all the tribes of children right. of Israel. So they're still being chosen now. And when the, the, when their, uh, the angel has finished sealing these 144,000, then destruction breaks out on the earth. That's why they're still being chosen now. Hope that answers your question. All right, Brother Kenya asks, I was wondering about where the Romans 9.28 prophecy about work being cut short in righteousness falls into this end time, if at all. I'm not familiar with that. So, sorry, I, I, I'm not familiar with that prophecy. When it was given, who made it, or what it's about, I, I'm sorry, I don't know that one. All right. I'll take one or two more. Okay. Raphael Simpson said, asked, can men wear bald heads? Um, yes, you can, unless you're a Levite high priest. Let's go to Leviticus 20, I think. Leviticus 20, it's 21 actually, I think. Leviticus 21. Uh, Leviticus 21 and 1, I see certain groups uh, teach uh, a bad doctrine um, about these things. 
Leviticus 21 and 1. Um, the book of Leviticus, Leviticus, Waikra, in Hebrew, chapter 21 and verse 1. And Yehovah said unto Moshe, Speak unto the priests. Unto who? Speak unto the priests. Unto the priests. The sons of Aharon. The sons of Aharon. And say unto them. And say unto them. Let's go down to verse 5. They. Who are they? The sons of Aharon. The sons of Aharon. The, the priests. Levi priests. They. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So then there's a doctrine that you can't shave your head bald. So they'll go straight to Leviticus 21 and 5 and overlook who he's talking to. They'll read this as though this is a general commandment for all people. And this is specifically for the Levites, the sons of Aharon. Not even just the Levites, the sons of Aharon specifically. They can't have baldness on their heads. Uh, I hope that answers your question. All right. I'll take one more last one. Last question. Um, all right. Tasha P. asks, when we lose our loved ones and they are believers in Yehoshua, do they automatically go to the Garden of Eden? Uh... Man, I gotta get some scriptures on that. I, I, I believe so. Uh, I'm trying to get a scripture for that. Uh, well, it depends. Um, there's different locations. There's the Garden of Eden, which is in the third heaven, and then you have martyrs who die for Yahushua's name. They can go to the seventh heaven. Let's go to uh, the Book of Enoch. We don't want to get into it. We want to get into that today. Um, the calendar. The book and secrets of Enoch. Let's go to Second Enoch. Let's go to. Hmm, maybe five or somewhere around there. And that's the second heaven. Let's go to. Yeah, I said five. Kano is essential to the third heaven. Let's start in verse 1. All right. We are in the secrets of Enoch, Kano's ascension to the third heaven. Mm -hmm. Chapter 5. And those men, verse 1. And those men raised me up and carried me into the third heaven, and they placed me inside the garden. In the third heaven, go ahead. And I looked down from there, and I saw that place of an immeasurable goodness. And I saw all the beautiful flowering trees and their fruits bringing forth a sweet, pleasant odor. And all the angels bringing it, and the sweet odor was abundant. And in the midst of the tree of life, in that place whereon Yehoah rests, from which he goes into the garden of Eden. And that tree is of in, ineffable goodness mm -hmm. and its sweet smelling odor, and it is more beautiful than anything created around it. Mm -hmm. Its appearance is gold and ruddy and like the color of fire. And it covers all the garden, and it has produced from all fruits in it. Its root is in the garden at the earth's end. Right, so that is the dwelling place of the Garden of Eden, which is the third heaven. But then in Revelation, you have saints who were martyred for Yehoshua's name, who are right directly under the throne of Yah, which he dwells in the seventh heaven. Uh, so let's go to like Revelations. Uh, where's that? Uh, Revelations. Hmm. Revelation six. Revelation. 
Revelation 6, and let's start at verse 9. All right. We're in the book of Revelations. Pick a little Hebrew, chapter 6, beginning at verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. Under the altar, of the, the, the altar souls. is in the seventh heaven, in the temple. Go ahead. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim mm -hmm. and for the testimony which they held. Mm. Okay. Go ahead. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Yehovah, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? Who was the first of these with Mars? Cain, Abel. Mm -hmm. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay, so we have others who die while in the seventh heaven. So. Um, based on um, your life, uh, there's different places in heaven that can be appointed unto a believer. Uh, here we see at the seventh heaven, um, the assembly of Philadelphia, they are made pillars in the kingdom of, in the temple of Elohim, that's in Revelations chapter 3, the assembly of Philadelphia. The eunuchs for the kingdom, they are in the seventh heaven. We read that in um, uh, First uh, Clement last week. There are many pillars. They dwell in the temple, in the, in the house of Elohim, in the seventh heaven. Um, and then you have some who are in the Garden of Eden, like uh, we just saw uh, when Mikael brought them up out of the uh, out of Sheol. So there's different locations um, depending on, um, I guess the uh, the um, I guess the level of sacrifice and obedience that we all make. Um, and that's for the saved and for those who were condemned, unfortunately, you know, Enoch also talks about a place of torments and there's different levels for that as well. So I pray that answers your question. Okay. Um, just one little small question that's related to what you just said okay. for clarification purposes. Patricia Meza said, I thought when you died, you rest into judgment day. Thought mm -mm. that was the purpose of Judgment Day. Mm -mm. Um, you, um, you rest, but where your rest is depends, right? So hell is not the lake of fire. There's a difference between. Let's go to it. Uh, mm -hmm. Revelations. Uh, I'm gonna say maybe nineteen or twenty. Mm -hmm. Revelations 20, let's start at verse 10. 10. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelations chapter 20 and verse 10. This is after all mankind is dead at this time, uh, and those who follow the beast and the false prophet, they are already thrown in the lake of fire by this time. Go ahead. Um, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, mm -hmm. where the beast and the false prophet are. The beast and the false prophet are there. Go ahead. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Right. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, mm -hmm. stand before Elohim, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Mm -hmm. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell deliver up the dead so which were in it. death and hell are separate from the lake of fire and brimstone. Go ahead. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Hell is actually a holding place of rest, so to speak, until the condemned are judged. And then there's a judgment of uh, the lake of fire, which is worse than hell, which is, I can't even imagine what that is. And then death and hell itself are cast into the lake of fire. So this is lake of fire is worse than hell because hell and death get thrown into that. Uh, so the resting place for the condemned is actually hell. And, and it may be that perhaps the garden or somewhere like that is a resting place um, until uh, the new Jerusalem um, appears. So, you know, I probably would have to read a little bit more on that. But there are some resting places until the judgment, right? Um, so it depends on how a person lives their life and they're judged. We're all judged according to how it works. And there are appropriate resting places for the saved and for the unsaved. Hallelujah. 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 May Yah bless you. We pray that the study was edifying. We give all the praises, all the honor and the glory to Yah and Hoshua. Father Ruach HaKodesh. May Yah bless you in this new week and keep you. And we hope to see you next Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.